I cannot believe we're already in September. <laughs> that is shocking. Okay, well, <laughs> so far I'm joined by my colleague uh, on the committee, Council Member Blumenfield, um, and we're waiting on, oh, here's Council Member Price, hey. Um, Mr. Espinoza, can you please call the roll? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council Member Rahman? Here. Council Member Blumenfield? Present. And Council Member Price? Here. Three members and a quorum. Great. Uh, well, we haven't, I think we missed our last meeting, um, but today we have about eight items to consider on this agenda. Um, and I'm just going to run through the items quickly. I don't think any of them will be, um, will take too long for us to consider. Um, item one is a ITA report in response to a budget recommendation from this last budget cycle. Um, and it's an update on the status of the implementation of permanent Wi-Fi hotspots in the city, which I think is really important. ITA is not the primary agency that's leading this. I believe it's um, uh, Bureau of Street Lighting, but ITA has been providing some support and uh, they're gonna be reporting on that support here. Item two is a CAO report relative to the fourth amendment to the contract with Softech and Associates for the completion of the internet document imaging system application enhancements and some other improvements. Um, and I believe that was for uh, DBS. Um, item three is a general services uh, report about a lease amendment for office space at 11620 Wilshire Boulevard, also to be used by DBS. Department of Building and Safety. Um, item four is a motion about reviewing a city-owned parking lot at 11312 Idaho Avenue. Um, and uh, that's in CD 11. And I think the hope is that uh, they're gonna figure out whether that's suitable for outdoor recreational or cultural amenities or open space um, from a parking lot. And items five through eight are all motions from council member Buscaino about lease agreements at the Wilmington Municipal Building. And uh, I believe someone from Councilmember Buscaino's office will just run through the nonprofits that those lease agreements are gonna be going to. But before we get to discussion on all of those items, I wanna take a moment for public comment. Um, I wanna take public comment on all items on the agenda. Uh, speakers are gonna have a minute if they're speaking on one item, two minutes if they're speaking on multiple items, and a minute for general public comment. So Mr. Espinoza, if you want to provide the instructions for people who are listening, if they want to participate in this meeting, and we can take a moment to see if anybody has anything to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-892-0108 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for a participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. There is no one in the queue, Councilwoman, to speak. Well, do we need to wait for a moment or are we good to move on if that's the case? I, I don't see any attendees, so I'm not sure. Kim, I, I think you're on mute. Hey, you can close public comment. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, no, you can no, close no. public. You can close public comment if uh, if you wish, and we'll continue forward. Okay, great. Well, we've given the public an opportunity to weigh in, um, and since there's no one, let's move on. Um, I'm going to recommend that we take item four which is the review of the parking lot on consent, unless there are any objections. Great. Um, Mr. Espinoza, you want to call the roll on that item? Thank you. Council Member Rahman? Yes. Council Member Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. And Council Member Price? Aye. Three ayes and item four is approved. Great. So let's uh, start with item one. This is... Um, uh, the ITA report about the budget recommendation. Mr. Espinosa, do you want to read this item into the record? Thank you. Item one is a report from the Information Technology Agency relative to the status of implementation of permanent Wi-Fi hotspots. 
And I believe today we have um, two representatives here from um, ITA to give us a brief uh, summary. Is that you, Pavan? Am I uh, saying? Yes, Council Member, uh, uh, that's Bhavin Patel. Bhavin Patel, okay, great. So go ahead, Bhavin, if you wanna give us a, um, a summary of, of your efforts. And I know you're working with the Bureau of Street Lighting on this project, so we're looking forward to um, hearing your, your partnership on this. Absolutely, thank you, Council Member. Uh, yeah, just a quick overview. Uh, you know, this is very important project and the request from the Council Office to us, ITA, as well as the Bureau of Street Lighting. As you mentioned, uh, mentioned Council Member, Bureau of Street Lighting is taking the lead on the project. IT is providing the full support from the technical uh, support as well as the infrastructure side. Uh, the overall, you know, city and the council uh, uh, directive, we wanna provide the uh, Wi-Fi across the city uh, areas, but the current focus in, on the Boyle Heights area that as a pilot project, uh, we are working closely with Bureau of Street Lighting. While it, this is still under the early development phase, uh, we have not encountered any issues from the infrastructure perspective or any technical perspective, uh, but uh, currently we are working with uh, Dan and Street Lighting as a pilot project for Boyle Heights, uh, looking at from the infrastructure, from the fiber perspective, as well as the broadband perspective. Uh, again, uh, there are no issues at this time, but we are working very closely to develop the plan on any fiber uh, infrastructure we can develop as well as the broadband. Uh, we are also looking at some of the city facilities to uh, to uh, bridge into the uh, overall Boyle Heights pilot project. Any questions uh, on the uh, on the project so far? Uh, again, as I mentioned, the one of the main item that was brought up was, has there been any issue? Uh, so far, we have not encountered any enforcement issues on the project. Can you provide a little bit more context for those of us who may not have been in the budget discussion on, um, I know this is part of a $6 million project, a broader $6 million project, and then this is a $2.1 million piece. Can you talk a little bit more about the funding for the project, the timelines, and when you expect to have the first hotspots up and running? Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, the current uh, focus is on the Boyle height as part of the $2.1 million grant funding. Uh, overall, uh, you know, I think we are looking at about year time frame. Again, I know we don't have the street lighting on, on the call. They would provide the overall project plan, uh, but we're looking at about a year uh, standpoint from the pilot project to provide the infrastructure uh, as well as the broadband perspective. Uh, on the content side of it, again, we're looking at the fiber uh, uh, connectivity uh, uh, in, in the corridor area for the Boyle Heights, uh, and mainly as a uh, uh, backbone connectivity, along with the broadband uh, connectivity for the uh, remaining areas. Uh, again, fiber will be the main backbone. So we're looking at the fiber infrastructure right now, uh, you know, working with the street lighting and other stakeholders uh, coming up with the plan as to how can we connect those uh, uh, facilities to provide the backbone on the fiber side of it and then expand from the uh, broadband perspective to provide the coverage in the Boyle Heights area. And it, um, from the report um, here in my notes, it looks like by early August, um, BSL was supposed to recommend a proposal for in terms of responses to the RFP um, to the Board of Public Works. So Councilmember Blumenfield, you might have more info on this than I do, but has that already taken place or is the project on on track to, to meet the original timeline? Bhavan, do you have a feedback? Uh, I can, you know, uh, uh, Council Member Rahman, I can probably, you know, get back on the uh, RFP uh, uh, status. And again, I know we don't have a street lighting on call, but uh, I can get back to you on uh, with the report on the status on the RFP. But ITA and street lighting are working closely on the RFP process, trying to you know get that finalized and start moving on the infrastructure perspective. Again, I can provide the report back on the RFP. Uh, Madam Chair, Ted Ross uh, with the Information Technology Agency. I apologize. It really is an item that Bureau of Street Lighting has been running point and the ITA has been providing technical expertise and guidance on the technologies, et cetera, but it is an item that they are funded for and it's an item that they have been running points and doing this work. So I apologize that we're not more forthcoming. It's just information we don't have right now. 
Okay. Um, let me just turn it over to my colleagues for questions. Councilmember Price, do you have, a, or Councilmember Bloomfield, did you want to speak to this particular issue, to the question that I asked? Uh, to the item, but maybe not. Oh, okay. Matter. Okay. Let's. Okay. Councilmember Price. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks for the report. Uh, it seems like we're moving with all deliberate speed <laughs> in this effort. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a technologist, but I'm not presuming that, you know, it can be done faster than it is, but it just seems like we're taking glacial speed to get this stuff done. Our constituents want access. You know, it, it, I'm excited that we're doing this pilot, but now you're saying it won't be a year for that pilot. You know, kind of kicks in and is there any way we can speed this process up? One question. And and how are we going to identify uh, other areas so, so we can expand this activity? I know we are focusing on underserved as, as some kind of a priority, but uh, you know, lots of underserved areas all around the city. How how are we going to determine where the where the next step is going to be as we roll this out? Certainly. So number one, in regards to how to speed it up, I think that really comes down into the method. So Bob, and as I understand it, the method selected was to be able to provide fiber, then from fiber, provide access points off that fiber. Correct, Bob? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, right. Deputy Joint, I mentioned that to Council Member Raman and the uh, committee uh, members. That That is the uh, plan right now is to provide the fiber backbone for the major uh, backbone connectivity and as well as the broadband perspective to provide the uh, the Wi-Fi uh, connectivity all across. Yeah, and council member, the, the benefit to that is that by installing fiber, you get a large amount of bandwidth, but the issue, and then you can start to create access points off of it. The problem to your point though, is the installation of fiber is very time consuming. So while they're building something that's built to last, they're also building something that takes a while to build. So we have no issues coming back to Bureau of Street Lighting and discussing if there's a ways to accelerate the value that becomes available to your point, people are, are really needing that today. We're working uh, with, the, with the cable companies, with uh, uh, online company, who, who help, who's providing the fiber in this particular situation? Who's providing the fiber? Or is that going out the bid? We're just, we don't know who's going to provide it. It's just bad. Bobin? Yeah, I can uh, take that uh, there. Thank you. So, Council Member Price, it, absolutely, that has been discussed as part of the RFP uh, committee. Uh, so, there will be a couple you know, different ways that uh, street lighting and IPA is taking on that. Uh, first and foremost, street lighting is going to uh, see where we can utilize our infrastructure as in street lighting infrastructure to speed up the process on the fiber connectivity, as well as how can we collaborate with the other vendors, as you mentioned, uh, Spectrum or AT&T to speed up the process on the fiber uh, backbone connectivity perspective. Sorry, Bhavan, I just wanted to clarify uh, if I could piggyback on your um, question, Councilmember Price. The RFP is for the fiber installation or the fiber has already been installed and then the RFP is just for the um, access point installation? Uh, thank you for that question, Councilmember. Uh, so RFP is called actually a turnkey from start to finish. It includes everything, including the fiber optic, broadband connectivity, as well as the, all the Wi-Fi deployment to provide the uh, the end-to-end -end services. So and the council, fiber has not been installed yet. That's correct. That's that's the lengthy lead time. And I know council member, you had a second question, but feel free if you want to ask on this first one. No, I was just piggybacking on council member Price's question. I apologize. Um, no, okay. please, please continue. Council member Price, would you like us to address your second question or did yes, you please. have? Okay. Uh, in, in regards, first, well, first of all, you just clarify. You're saying that Boyle Heights is not going to be turned on for about another year, or six months, or nine months, as our pilot, or is it going to happen sooner? So, Bob, and as I understand, it's the result of an RFP, and then the RFP was including the method of procurement of fiber as well as access points, which can be time-consuming. Is that correct, Bob? That that is correct, Ted. The, the overall project plan and the timeline will depend on that RFP uh, proposals. Okay. And those RFPs are due back in when? Are they being considered now? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? The RFPs are being considered now or they're out on the street now? What's the status of the RFP? Bobin, can you confirm the timing on the RFP? And I'm sorry, Council Member Price, I don't have the detail update, but I apologize again, you know, street lighting is taking the lead on that effort on the RFP. 
uh, my team, ITA teams are providing a full support as part of the RFP review, uh, but it is actually in the review process. It's, it's already been in out on the street in the proposals uh, review by the committee. So you okay. have already reviewed the proposals and provided a recommendation to Bureau of Street Lighting on which of the proposals are the best? Uh, the, the proposal uh, review actually is led by Street Lighting Council Member Amon. Uh, so it's, so it's happening right now. Proposals are being reviewed right now. So a, a, a vendor has not been selected, a bid has not been selected, correct, Bobbin? Uh, that is my understanding. Uh, Ted, again, I, I could be wrong, but I don't want to say it. I can come back with you know, uh, on that status after discussing with street writing. Hey, then, but oh. It's how do we determine the next location, locations? Right. E excellent question. Uh, it's really been a partnership between the mayor's office and the Bureau of Street Lighting. So the mayor's office has a digital inclusion coordinator, uh, which I'm seeing is not on this call. Uh, and the Bureau of Street Lighting has received funding and actually has staffing in this area. So I, as I said, and I, I, I do sincerely apologize. We effectively are the technical professionals who are helping weigh in on the results of the, of the item. And so you're asking very good questions that I apologize that IT doesn't have the answer to. Well, we, we just have to coordinate and, uh, you know, communicate. <laughs> Better. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Price. Councilmember Blumenfield. Thank you. A um, couple things. One, I, I assume, are you using micro trenching to speed this process up? Is that part of the process, or are we using the old system? Uh, thank you. Your knowledge was micro trenching included as potential the RFP. Uh, yes. Thank you, uh, Councilmember, uh, for bringing that up. Uh, micro trenching actually is one of the recommendation the speed of the process, absolutely. Okay, because that's, you know, cutting off months of time. On the, in the oh, private absolutely. sector, it's it's just speeding things up ridiculously and also making it much cheaper. So presumably that's being applied here. Uh, and then help me understand, what do we actually get at the end of the day? So I get it, we get the fiber in, um, in the ground and we're creating these nodes. Does that mean that the people in these apartment complexes will have free internet access, uh, or is it just mean reduced cost through a private, um, you know, through subsidizing a, a private vendor? Or how how is that? What what does it look like to the end user at the end of the day when this is all said and done? Without having BSL on the line, our understanding is it should be free internet access based on these access points in this fiber. And the free internet access is is going into the apartment complex. So uh, a kid doing homework will be in his room or in his living room and be able to access the internet for free. That is our understanding of the, the proposal, correct, Bobbin? Uh, that's correct. Uh, our intent is to provide the, the Wi-Fi access to as far as we can get, you know, as you mentioned, council member. Uh, all the way up to the apartment uh, complexes. Because the access points are still are, are in the light fixtures, right? Yes, hence, hence why Bureau of Street Lighting has been running points on it. It's, it's you can call it like a smart infrastructure conversation. So the, the, the lights on the streets are going to be able to penetrate the apartment complexes or do those apartment complexes need to have boosters on them in order to take that signal and uh, enable the folks who may not have a window unit or, or have a unit on the wrong side of the building. I mean, how, how is that going to work? Obviously, you can come out and sit in the middle of the street and use it. Uh, but, you know, this is next to an apartment complex, a, a lower income apartment complex. And we're like, what, what's the distance that you get from the light pole? Correct. So the requirements were clearly provided to the vendors. And so each of the vendor bids is proposing on how they solution it. So they'll describe and say, based on these locations and based on the assets available to us, here's the penetration, here's the measurements of how it provides. And the vendor bids will include any type of you know, retransmitting or rebroadcasting. Uh, I, I haven't seen the proposals myself personally, but I'm sure those who propose it will include that in the conversation. 
So are the apartment complexes part of this process so that they will either on their own or be required to to do whatever they need to do to, to their units to make sure that they're taking that signal into the building? I, how I is apologize. That? I'm, I'm unsure of how BSL has been interacting with the apartment complexes. Because that's a big part of the success of this is, is the use is the people. Um, Bob, are you are you aware if the if the you know what the relationship is with the the apartments that surround this area? Uh, yes, council member, it is actually a very important point. It is it has been discussed. Uh, though apartment complex actually are not part of the project project scope uh, to do any work in the complex itself, but to extend the coverage all the way to the apartment uh, with the, as high of the bandwidth we can make it available. That is part of the requirement by IT as well as the street lighting uh, to make it happen. Okay. Yeah, I just, I would love to see how that, I mean, this is, this is what we've talked about. You know, I'd love to see how that's going to actually play out. And, and, and I don't know if there's diagrams or whatnot, I mean, of, of how you get that signal to that last apartment building. Um, you know, in that low-income unit that's on the back side, in the corner. Um, you know, are they are they able to get it? Or, and again, I, I would imagine there's some basic fixes that could be done. Not you know where the apartment building, if they're a partner here, could could have some sort of a repeater or or even something wired in the building that would extend it. But I don't know. And then, how many people, you know, can a access point? actually serve at a time yeah it depends on the piece of equipment that the vendor is proposing to install it depends on the bandwidth they have running to that equipment so it does become very tactical and very specific um, and you know based on this conversation i respectfully request a report back uh, for you all to consider but one that would include the bureau of street lighting the folks who are running point the the funded positions who are running point on this the mayor's digital inclusion coordinator, and they could actually start to update on, let's say, based on the timing, the selected vendor, um, or even have that conversation before a vendor is selected, because you, you raise very good points and very good questions, um, but the, ultimately the vendor's equipment will be able to dictate it. There's some general rules of thumb regarding Wi-Fi and some of its limitations or its right. advantages, um, but it really comes down to the power of the system that they're doing and running off of that light bulb. Let's see. Well, um I just wanted to provide a little bit of uh, feedback here, which may help us uh, move this conversation forward, because I do think it's really important. Um, BSL, I know, is coming to report to this committee on this project, um, and I believe that they're scheduled to come, not the next meeting, but the meeting after that. And so what I can do um, in advance of that meeting is to send over the list of questions that have come up in this committee um, so far, and make sure that they're, they and the representatives from the mayor's office are prepared to report on those questions when they come in next time, because I think these are really essential. I also um, will be asking them about the timeline, Councilmember Price, and just to say that, you know, I've been hearing about this project for quite a while, and, uh, and I'm a little bit alarm that we were supposed to have a RFP vendor selected by early August and it's now early September and I don't believe that we still have that in place. So we'll ask them about the timeline, changes to the timeline, and I think hopefully um, a, a, a set of goals that we want to meet over the next few months to make sure that we're moving more quickly on this than we have been because this um, because I'm excited about this project. I know everyone on this committee is. I know there's a lot of enthusiasm for it on the council and we just wanna make sure that we're moving as quickly as possible. So I um, I can make sure that we have that follow-up and we'll have the um, presentation uh, in, two, in two meetings time. Are there additional questions from our committee members? Oh, council member Price, go ahead. Madam Chair, in, in addition to that, just some discussion too of how we are coordinating these programs. You know, there are a number of initiatives I think kind of going around. I was at a meeting uh, several months ago at one of our housing uh, developments, and they were rolling out some new Wi-Fi, no cost, low cost. You know, so you know we got lots of different 
projects kind of in motion. I'm just curious how they all are coming together. If they are coming together, they're not yeah. they're going to be independent. But I think we should have that discussion of, of all services being provided uh, in, in addition to those ones. For sure. And I know that there's some really exciting efforts and investments being made at the county level on this issue. Um, we heard some of that when uh, we talked about the, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the plan from no going back LA on achieving uh, greater broadband accessibility and achieving greater access to internet across the entire county. And I think going back to that report and making sure that we're coordinating with county entities who are working on this as well, throwing all of these on a map and seeing where these projects are happening, where the investments are happening, uh, and, and having that review as part of our next discussion, I think would also be useful. So we'll work on that in the committee um, and uh, hopefully in a month's time when we return, uh, we'll be able to have a more robust discussion on this particular project, the timelines, the goals, the impacts and any questions around access in nearby apartment buildings, but also on how this project connects to our existing efforts throughout the city and county, the new funding coming from the state government uh, to support on these issues um, and how we can leverage all of that to move us towards greater connectivity in the city. And I sincerely apologize that IT has not been able to provide more answers to these really important questions. We've been playing the role as technical advisors, knowing the technology and helping support and augment the experience. But the mayor's office, as well as Bureau of Street Lighting, have the funded positions and have been writing the reports and, and uh, running points on these efforts. I appreciate that input um, and look forward to having more information in an upcoming meeting. Um, with that, I think we can move on from this item. Is there any other questions that I'm leaving out at this time? And if anything comes up, please feel free to reach out after this meeting is over from any of the people on this call and we can liaise with VSL to make sure that we're moving forward on all of that. Uh, what is this, uh, what action do we need to take on this report? I believe this is a note and file, file of the ITA report. Okay, so do we need to call the roll on that? Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Take Thank, it away with Spinoza. Thank you. Council Member Raman? Yes. Council Member Bloomfield? Good luck. And Council Member Price? Aye. Three ayes, and this item is noted and filed. Okay, great. So let's move on to. Um, I believe we have item two next. Um, if you could. That item into the record. Thank you. Item number two is a report from the city administrative officer relative to the fourth amendment to the contract with SoftTech and Associates for the completion of internet document imaging system application enhancements and functional improvements. Great. And I believe we have both uh, representatives from the CAO and from DBS to speak on this item. And I think one thing that would be helpful is really to talk about what, it, you know, Internet document imaging system application enhancements, maybe just getting a little bit of layman's translation of what those services are and what they're doing for DBS will be helpful, why those investments were being made at this time, and uh, as well as the update on the contract and, and um, uh, why the timeline was delayed on this. So I'll turn it over to our CAO and DBS reps who are here, who I'm not seeing right now, but. Um, so hi, good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. Hi. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Sarah Varon. I'm with the Office of the CEO. Um, again, this item is a uh, request from the department to execute a fourth amendment um, to the contract with Soft Tech Associates um, for the provision of software maintenance and support services for their internet document imaging system, or IDIS. Um, this system is the department's primary document management system. It's critical to the resource management bureau's daily operations. Um, this proposed amendment would allow the department to extend the contract term by one year in order to avoid a lapse in services needed um, and complete um, various application enhancements and functional improvements, which were delayed due, the, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there is no general fund impact. 
as the contract is fully funded by the Building Institute Building Permit Enterprise Trust Fund, and our office does con concur with the recommendations of the department. Um, so we do have representatives from the department available to answer more, uh, any questions and speak more to um, what the system does for them. Great. Let's so we'll turn it over to DBS then. Tony, are you here to speak on this? Yeah, so I can give a description in terms of what our internet document imaging system is. It's uh, essentially um, the document repository for um, the department's records, um, including the vital records of building permits, certificate of occupancy. Um, you know, some of those records are made available to the public online, but the enhancements that we're talking about um, that are gonna be built as part of this contract amendment um, would be uh, primarily you know, workflow enhancements uh, for our staff managing the documents. And uh, doing the data entry, um, adding uh, metadata, so on and so forth in those records. I don't know, Greg, if there's anything you wanna add to that, please. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much covered it, uh, Tony. Uh, I would just say the work, the work management piece is something that does not exist in the system today. Uh, the other enhancements as part of this uh, this effort is to uh, improve functionality uh, and modernize things. Okay, um, great. And I was just curious, given our conversations on procurement that have been happening um, in this committee and in other places across the council, um, I was just curious if DBS could provide a little bit more input on how did you figure out what enhancements you needed to the system and how to source the service? How did you, basically, how did you identify what needed to change about the service um, and, and how did you reach out to soft or how did you identify soft tech as the, as the service provider for this? Um, I, I'll start. Uh, so the items that were identified that are needed in this, um, it's part of a multi-phase effort um, we are moving from a, a technology called FileNet towards a technology called Cofax. And it's, uh, it's an IBM technology for uh, the document capturing process when you basically take a file and you insert it into the system. And uh, we started, we embarked on this process uh, several years ago. Uh, and it's, it's just a continuation of that. It's making like the initial move to Cofax we completed but there are elements on the back end of the, uh, the programming that are still using old FileNet uh, programming calls and they need to be updated to use COFAX. Uh, so that, that's a big part of uh, this effort. The uh, workplace management, uh, sorry, not workplace, the work management module that we're putting in, this was uh, a new feature that we pushed later in the development process because we felt it wasn't as important. Uh, what that piece does is it tracks uh, LEDBS staff time and and track efficiency, uh, you know, basic reporting about how employees are doing uh, and ensuring that the process is efficient. And that was just delayed because it wasn't considered a part of the initial effort. And did you work with IT, ITA to figure out, um, kind of to, to articulate so, uh, what your needs were or you had, or you were doing it internally within DBS? It was all done internally. Um, Softtech was, uh, I think they went through an RFP process, is that right, Dan? Yeah. yeah. To, to initially be chosen for this role, for the um, to bring in the IDIS system. Um, so that's how Softtech was selected. Uh, as far as extending it to uh, to this COFAX portion of it, um, IDIS was selected because they understood the, the vision of the uh, product. Are there other departments in the city that use um, the same vendor or the same, the, the new system that you're on, the IBM-based document um, imaging system? Yeah, it's just the uh, LADBS system right now. Um, the documents are accessible by other departments, so it, as well as the public. If, if people want to view documents, they will use our system. Uh, but as far as inserting documents into the system, it is a building and safety function. Okay. Those are all my questions for this. Um, I don't know whether other council members had additional questions. Okay. Um, and uh, thank you to DBS and CAO for your updates. Uh, Mr. Espinoza, is there an action that we need to take on this item? Yes, um, to approve the CAO report and the recommendations. Okay, great. Can you please call the roll? 
Thank you. Council Member Raman? Yes. Council Member Bloomfield? Aye. And Council Member Price? Aye. Um, this item is approved with three ayes. Okay. Um, let's move on to item three. Uh, this is a, a, another lease amendment, I believe. So, um, Mr. Espinosa, if you want to read the item into the record. Thank you. Item number three is a report from the Department of General Services relative to a lease agreement with 11620 Welshire Los Angeles GP LLC for office space located at 11620 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 11, um, 1100 for use by the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety's West Los Angeles Inspection Bureau. And I believe we have uh, someone from the CAO's office to give a brief summary of this. Oh, you can't hear you, Amy. Unfortunately, still can't hear you. I think, um, so this is Wayne from GST Real Estate. I think Amy may have some technical difficulties. So I just, I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you. Okay, so this is uh, just a, it's basically a, a lease renewal for um, building and safety in the West LA uh, office. I know there are um, plans um, long-term for the Civic Center in the West LA, but for the time being, this is just a, a renewal with the current landlord and we've been in the um, that present office. And this would be an, an amendment uh, for the continua continuation of that lease. And are the, lease, are the lease terms the same as prior? So there is, um, uh, there's a 3% increase in the rent. Um, we, um, we understand that the marketplace is competitive, um, but uh, based on the report and the assessment of the marketplace and the current um, conditions, we felt it was a fair deal. We did get uh, a substantial rent abatement in this uh, as part of this amendment. Uh, and so after the calculating or analyzing the net effect of rent, we felt it was a, um, a, a good deal to uh, continue. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I just had a, those were all my questions. Are there any other questions from the other members of the committee? Okay, great. Mr. Espinoza. Thank you. Um, Council Member Raman? Yes. Council Member Blumenfield? Aye. And Council Member Price? Aye. And three ayes to approve the Department of General Services report recommendation. Okay, great. Um, and then we just have uh, items five through eight. And I believe we have a representative from Council Member Buscaino's office just to talk to us a little bit more about. Um, what these various lease agreements are. Is that correct? That is correct. So items five through eight are motions from Council Members Buscaino Lee relative to nonprofit lease agreements with um, the Wilmington Municipal Building, uh, which is located at 544 North Avalon um, Boulevard. Item number five is with Avalon Arts and Culture Alliance. Item number six is with the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. Item number seven is with the Strength-Based Community Change. And item number eight is with LA Walks. Great, um, and I believe we have Fernando here. Fernando, do you wanna just share any additional information? I know that you had. Fernando. Oh, Dennis. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'll get started. Um, Fernando Navarrete, my colleague, is our Wilmington Field Deputy, and he was so dogged and passionate about his uh, efforts to bring
bring dollars to the Wilmington community, both to the municipal building, to uh, Avalon Boulevard, as well as Wilmington Town Square Park that he was promoted and named our public works deputy. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background, this is an old bank building um, located on Avalon Boulevard. It's one of our priority corridors um, that we've been working on. Um, these are four nonprofit organizations that we've had a great deal of experience working with. They've been fantastic partners for the community. Um, I believe Fernando's on. I want to let him kind of go through uh, our past experience working with these organizations. But I can certainly say that, that we believe the public benefit derived um, from these organizations far exceeds the below market rate we're seeking. Um, so, Fernando, let me turn it over to you and you can give a little bit more information um, about the work we've done with these folks. Fernando? We're having an unlucky morning here. I was excited to hear more about these nonprofits, Dennis. Madam Chair, perhaps that's all the more reason we need to get some broadband and Wi-Fi improvements to the Wilmington area. Um, <laughs> let me just give you a, a little bit of information um, about the ones I, I certainly know um, for SBPC, Strength-Based strength Community Change. We've worked with them to develop a community garden um, for the Wilmington community. Um, Wilmington Chamber of Commerce, we've been working with to establish a bid um, for the Avalon Corridor, and they've been fantastic partners. Um, LA Walks, you may be familiar with. I know it was founded by Deborah Murphy. She was a Silver Lake resident, um, but they do fantastic work advocating for pedestrian uh, safety, multimodal transportation, um, and we consider them a, a great partner for the district. Um, one other thing I just want to say, you know, we recognize that um, GSD real estate staff has been hit heavy by the SIP program. None of these leases will be ready by the time Council Member Buscaino leaves office, but we just wanted to get the process started and want to um, just express our thanks and gratitude to the folks over at GSD. They've had a lot of work to do, especially with all the leases for our various um, interim homeless facilities, our tiny home villages, our, um, our ABH facilities, and they've had a huge workload. So if I could just express our gratitude, we know they've had a, a, a great deal of, of workload, um, but we really appreciate them at least getting the process started on these. Hello there. Fernando. I I'm think sorry. we have a connection. Yay. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, I was, my computer here at the Wilmington Municipal Building, for some reason the audio wasn't working, so I had a call in on my phone. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, council member. So Dennis, if, if you'd like, I, I know you're on a roll here, but I can talk a little bit more about uh, the significant tier if, if the time permits. And um, again, my apologies. No, go ahead. I know that um, I know that your office was very excited about these agreements, um, and I was uh, I was also excited to hear more about what you're planning for the area. So please go ahead. Yes, thank thank you so much, Council Member Rom, and, and and thank you so much to, to the rest of the council members for this opportunity to, to talk. Um, I'm uh, as, as Dennis mentioned, I'm I'm especially passionate about the Wilmington community because I number one have lived in Wilmington for over 27 years. I represented the uh, Wilmington community uh, for Council Member Joe Buscaino for the last five years, and also as a, a public works deputy for the last year. Um, so this this project is definitely close to my heart. Um, my name is Fernando Navarrete, as I mentioned, um, and a little bit more about these leases. So I know Dennis was sort of on a roll, but to sort of put into context of what we're um, trying to do on the Avalon corridor. So um, so this this building is, is significant. So when Wilmington was annexed uh, around 1906, 1907, uh, the, the city then uh, shortly acquired this uh, municipal building that was um, previously a, an old bank. Uh, and a lot of the remnants of the bank still exist here in the building today. It's, it's a really cool 
uh, early 1900s building with, with beautiful facades and pillars that sort of face the Avalon corridor. Um, the other significant um, aspect of the building is that it's also home to our LADOT, uh, both parking enforcement and cross guards for our entire district and uh, also portions of the uh, South LA area. Um, but um, what, what we're here to talk about today is the, um, you know, the, the building um, is also home currently um, to four of the most important organizations in the Wilmington community, which are um, Strength-Based Community Change, uh, SBCC, a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, Los Angeles Walks, which Council Member uh, Raman, I believe you're familiar with, uh, 501c3 as well, that does a number of projects, not only in the Wilmington community, but really throughout um, the city of LA. Uh, the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce uh, that has existed here since the uh, late 1800s, um, and the Avalon Arts and Cultural Alliance, uh, one of the uh, uh, most important um, cultural and um, um, historical preservation organizations uh, here in the Wilmington community, and, and to dive a, a little bit deeper about each one. Um, so strength-based, uh, uh, Strength-based community change uh, was founded in 1973, um, and it offers a full range of innovative grassroots programs, initiatives across, across the city and county of Los Angeles. Uh, it, ex it expands as far as uh, Antelope Valley. Um, it, it was first established the IHARP program, which was uh, an, um, a grassroots movement that was born off of um, you know the community's will and need to stop gang violence um, back in uh, 2012. Um, they just recently, last weekend, celebrated their 10-year uh, anniversary, um, and the program has expanded to both um, uh, Watts and Harbor City in our districts, uh, but also have uh, iHeart chapters uh, in communities like uh, like East LA and uh, some portions of uh, South LA as well. Um, and their purpose is to provide a, a number of services, including child development, early education, um, and relationship uh, based community um, programs, uh, which includes you know, civic engagement um, and legal and immigration services. Um, they serve uh, annually over 20,000 fa uh, families, not only in the city of LA, but in the county of LA. Um, and here um, on the Avalon corridor, they've been instrumental in um, helping us develop our very first um, outdoor uh, dining platforms, uh, and we'll manage those, and those will come down the pipeline uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's the first organization. The second one is LA Walks, founded in 1998 uh, from urban designer Deborah Murphy. Uh, founded this organization along friends who are focused on fostering uh, a more livable city. Um, here specifically in Wilmington, uh, they work uh, alongside uh, what we call our promotoras or our promoters in English um, and developed the city's first um, decorative crosswalk on the intersection of L Street. Uh, and Figueroa Street in Wilmington, uh, a project that took uh, over three years, unfortunately, in a collaboration with Metro and LADOT. But nonetheless, uh, the women, uh, the promotoras, were persistent um, in ensuring that Wilmington um, received the, uh, their, their adequate share of funds for Metro um, and LADOT. And last year, they celebrated that uh, momentous uh, mural. More so than the actual mural, I think it was an opportunity for uh, these women to participate and engage with their community and elected officials. Um, and two of those women today, uh, one of them serves um, on one of the committees for the Metro Board, and then the other uh, serves uh, through the LADOT Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Uh, so uh, an amazing civic engagement, um, uh, sort of next chapter has emerged out of this uh, participation through LA Watts. Um, third one is the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce that I mentioned uh, the, the chamber has been existent from well over before the Wilmington community was annexed into the city of LA. And um, the Chamber of Commerce is an association of business leaders designed to promote and protect the interests of the Wilmington business community. Here specifically, um, they represent um, industry um, like the Port of Los Angeles, uh, our uh, multiple refineries, but also the small businesses that we have both on our Anaheim uh, corridor and our Avalon corridor. Uh, have been instrumental partners um, to making sure that as we're going through this renaissance of the Avalon Corridor and uh, one opportunity as the um, the Port of Los Angeles develops is a 70 million, uh, 70 million waterfront park for Wilmington. Um, they are um, really engaging with, um, you know, uh, Wilmington uh, bred communities uh, to, you know, 
begin to uh, find homes for those businesses um, on our corridor. And then finally, the Avalon Arts and Culture Alliance. Uh, they, were, they were the original um, founders of the Wilmington Art Walk, the first and only uh, Wilmington Art Walk uh, about eight years ago. Um, so the organization was born uh, really out of a need to um, not only revitalize Avalon Boulevard, but really provide a space for, for artists, uh, for, the, for the vibrant downtown that it could be here in the heart of the Harbor Wilmington. So uh, for eight years strong, every quarter, um, the Avalon Arts and Cultural Lines Houses Our Walk started with 10 vendors and now spans over four um, city blocks on Avalon Boulevard, now over 200 vendors. And at this point, they're, they, they now have to unfortunately deny vendors because they just simply don't have the space. Um, and again, they've been an important partner for, for the renaissance of Avalon Boulevard uh, and ensuring that, um, again, the, this corridor and the Wilmington community as a whole um, you know, has a, a voice at the table when it comes to um, these sort of events and programming. Um, so for these reasons, um, council members, we respectfully ask that, you know, these four organizations are considered for um, lease agreements here uh, in the Wilmington Municipal Building. Um, and as Dennis mentioned, we're currently going through a, uh, through, uh, through a project here in the, uh, the Municipal Building to add a significant funds to not only re revitalize the exterior of the building, which will include uh, new fencing, uh, a new slurry for the parking lot, camera systems, lighting, uh, and painting for both the inside and outside, uh, but really provide, uh, uh, make the Wilmington uh, Municipal Building a home here for the Wilmington community where they can um, seek out um, resources, information, and really connect with not only their council office moving forward, but also organizations um, that provide services or they simply want to open a business, you know, they, they have a home here in the Wilmington, um, in the Wilmington Municipal Building. Um, so thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for considering this item. Uh, and, and I hope it goes, uh, it goes through. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, for your obvious passion and um, your excitement about these organizations and how it links into your broader vision for change for Wilmington. It's really, inspiring to see and we don't often get an opportunity um, to see into this kind of district planning um, and especially on this committee so it's really great to hear it and uh, to be able to to hopefully support that moving forward Dennis did you have additional feedback yes thank you madam chair I would be remiss if I did not recognize our committee clerk Michael Espinoza who came down to Ciclavia when it was hosted in Wilmington last so I just want to Thank Michael for, for showing love to all parts of the city. It was great to, to have you. Um, Madam Chair, I wanna express my thanks to you for scheduling this, uh, these motions so quickly since we do have a limited amount of time left on Council Member Buscaino's uh, term. And of course, express my gratitude to your staff, especially that Serna, who is always such a pleasure to work with. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. Um, Council members, uh, did you guys have any questions about these or? Nope, okay. Well, uh, congratulations again, Fernando, on all the work you've put together in, in the district and in Wilmington in particular. Um, are there still spaces open for other nonprofits to, to locate there or is that is your space maxed out at the municipal building now? Um, we actually, we, we do, and thank you for that question. We do have, and we'll have some space available. Um, as I mentioned, we have park enforcement here. We have the four organizations and we, we do, we will have one or two offices. Um, we, so you know, in it, yeah, yeah. So, but, Great. um, you know, as, as, you know, Dennis mentioned, we, we are coming to the, the close of our term. So we also wanted to pay respect for the incoming administration who may want to consider, you know, other organizations. So, you know, sort of, uh, Trying to balance that. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. Well, I think we're prepared to move forward on this item. Um, and thank you both for sharing your um, sharing your work with the committee. Uh, Mr. Espinoza, can you call the roll? Thank you. And this is for items number five, six, seven, and eight. Council Member Raman? Yes. Council Member Bloomfield? I'm with you live. And Council Member Price? Aye. And that is three ayes for these four motions that will be approved. Fantastic. Uh, Mr. Espinoza, do we have anything on the desk right now? No, the desk is clear. Great. Thank you all, and this meeting is adjourned. Happy Thursday.
take care.